Hi guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video, we are going to be covering moving platforms in Blueprint and then showing you guys how we can actually take the logic from that and turn it into a function within the Blueprint just to make things look a little bit cleaner when we're done. So I've just got the third person example, my favorite, yay, example. I've got myself a little folder here. It's empty right now because I haven't actually done any of this yet. So I'm starting with a clean slate. You're going to be starting with a clean slate. Let's hop into this. We're going to right click a blueprint class already stumbling over my words we want an actor and we're just going to call this platforms underscore VP we're going to double click this to open it there we are now this is our blueprint window if you've followed my blueprints before you're going to uh, you're going to be familiar with this if not and over on the right hand side we've got the details panel which is things that we can change all the different details that are specific to this blueprint or the component that we currently have selected within the blueprint and then on the right hand side we actually uh, the left hand side rather we have the components and then everything that makes up this blueprint all the different little pieces so what are we going to need we're going to need an actual platform for our for our guy so what we're going to do is we're going to add a new component and we're going to make this a cube and now it's going to be a very very small cube there he is this is I believe just a one meter by one meter square. Now I'm just going to quickly right click this and I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this platform. Well, I would if I could type it. And now I'm just going to click and drag this onto the default scene route to make this the default scene route. What this does is, is basically make sure that this now is the parent of everything else that we put within this blueprint. So outside of this blueprint, if it's in the world and we click the cube, then everything that belongs to this blueprint will also be selected. That's going to be quite important for what we're doing. So we'll open him back up. Now we'll head to the viewport. We're going to click on the platform. I actually want to just change the scale around a little bit. I think I'm going to go with an X and Y of 5 and then a Z of 0.2, which should make it quite flat. You can see there, that might be a bit big. We'll compile that really quick and minimize it down so we can see it in the world. That is pretty big. We'll, we'll open him back up again. And we'll say 3-3. Three, three. Compile that. And then check it. Yeah, that's a decent size. Now, obviously, you can use your own mesh for this. I'm just using this um, cube because it's quick and easy. And it's really, you know, it's a fast way to help you guys understand what we're doing. Um, but, you know, use whatever mesh you want. If you've got a personal mesh, mesh, use that. If you don't want to use a square, then go ahead and use a cylinder. Use a sphere if you can get your guy to stand on it. Who cares? Let's go crazy. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say add component and we're going to search for a component. We're just going to make a box collision. Now you can see here it's automatically within the parenting of the platform because we have platform selected. And you can see if we drop, if we close this little drop down menu, it actually hides the box. That's good. So we're going to select the box. You can see because we had our cube, it's kind of matched our cube here because we had it already selected. We actually want to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. I just realized I nearly headbutted the, the microphone. I'm still getting used to this thing. And we're just going to say, make the Z 2 or make the X and Y 1.5. Okay. Now that will only be activatable while the character is standing on the top. Now point out, this is a video request. Uh, somebody's requested this to work in a very specific way. So, um, Yay! <laughs> Video requests. I love them. I do love them. I like them. It gets me thinking about new things. Um, anyway, we've got this. Now what we're going to call this, we're just going to rename the box and we're going to call this player, uh, player touch. We'll call this player touch. And basically the player touch is going to be what will turn this thing on. So if the player touches it, then we'll do a thing. We're going to need a couple more things, so we're just going to add a component. Um, how much should we add this time? Tell you what, we are just going to use another box collision. Okay, now this one, I don't quite want to be that shape. So, can we go on just squared pillars? Nope, it's going to be a pain. Okay. Fine. We'll just leave it like this and we'll try and scale this. Not like that. We don't want to change the X. We want to change the Y. Oopsie daisy. 
Uh, Z rather, we want to change to Z. Make that just a little bit bigger. Now, this I'm just going to raise up a little bit. In fact, I'm not. We'll, we'll leave this at location zero because we want this to start level with the actual uh, platform that we're going to be using. And we're going to rename this and we're going to call this end underscore point. Okay. So we'll compile that really quick. We're going to go into the event graph. And now the stuff that's already here, we're actually going to just delete event begin, actor overlap, and event tick. With event play, what we want to do is from platform, drag this out. Oops, hello. Uh, from down in the components rather, not from the list up here. We want to get the platform. We want to get local. Now we want to get. Um, I want to get location, just get location. Get relative location, there we go. And I will create a new variable and we're going to call this start loc, start location. We're going to change this to a vector, which is a series of three numbers, x, y, and z. So this is going to be our start position. We'll drag this out and we're going to say set. We're going to set the start location to the platform's relative location when the game begins. Then what we're going to do from here as well is we'll create a new variable. We're going to call this end underscore lock. And then we're going to set this. And what we're going to set this to is our end point. So we're going to drag our end point, get, get relative location. Plug this into the end location, like so. And now these will update. Nice and simple. So we'll compile that. And what we're going to do is we're going to say play a touch, or click, uh, not right click, drag this out. We're going to get this. In fact, no, we're not. We're going to delete that. Uh, on the components up at the top, right click the player touch, add an event on uh, component begin overlap. Ugh, my words today are just not coming out. I've got a headache. I've been out all morning playing with the nephew. He's very, very loud. He's still very, very young. So other actor, I want to cast to our third person character. It's going to make sure that we are in fact using the third person character for the overlap. And what we're going to say is platform. We'll get that. Then we're going to timeline. We're going to open this up. We're going to set the length for this to one, and I can show you guys why in a little while. We're going to make this a float track. Add a key to the curve. We're going to say zero, zero. Add another key, and then we're going to say one, one. Go back to the event graph. Now with the platform, set relative location. We're going to plug the update pin into the set relative location. Now from our new track here, this is going to be an, kind of like um, it's our value, kind of like an alpha that's going to show us um, where along this we want. So what we're going to do is drag out from this, we're going to say lerp vector. Now you can see it's got two different points here. We're going to plug the return value into the new location for the platform set relative location. Now the value that we're getting from the timeline is the alpha. At zero, it's going to start at A, and then at one, it's going to end at B, and everything between, it's going to lurk between those two values. So it's going to go from zero to one. So if this is zero, zero, zero to three sixty, three sixty, three sixty, then halfway through, it's going to be at one eighty for all of these values. What we're going to do is drag out the end location, uh, start location rather, plug that into A, the end location, plug that into B. There we go, and we can compile this. And we'll just close it down. And what we're going to do is we're going to test this out. So over here, now I've got this um, this blueprint selected. You can see we've got our different boxes in there. If I was to grab just the endpoint, we can just move the endpoint. OK, so you can see that's where the endpoint is going to be. We can press play. And now if our character is to get on this box. Oh, that's not right. So what have we done wrong? <laughs> let's see let's let's make those 
visible to us and then if we press play and we click on the platform over here we can actually see what we've got you see the start location is way off the end location it thinks it should just be moving in the Y but as you can see it's not so it's getting the, the start and end locations correct but it's not moving them properly so let's see what are we doing wrong well the start location in fact should always be zero 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 but we can see over here where's he gone there he is our start location is actually really far off now why is that it's getting the platforms relative it's setting its start location but let's see what happens if we unplug this real quick so bleh, get off there we go. we'll compile that we'll press play we'll select the platform you can see now it's going zero 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 and the end location is x zero y two nine six and z is zero and you can see that also hasn't worked properly so why well we don't want to teleport we don't want this to be a teleport we do want to sweep let's see what will happen if we sweep this you see it just blinked in the wrong direction so let's see perhaps instead of relative we'll use world <coughs> excuse me so we'll get rid of this and this get world location and we'll put these into these locations instead instead of relative we will set oops, world location like so there we are now you can see that's working it's because I chose relative instead of world this headache okay so will this work no matter where we put this little box so let's select the blueprint and we'll select the endpoint and we'll move this up a little bit and if we were to jump on this this should go upwards and you can see that it does so this will now go wherever you tell this end location to be okay so we'll open this up and what we're going to do is we're going to actually say right click the player touch and then we want to say on end overlap again we want to cast to the third person character or whatever character blueprint you're using make sure you cast to that we are other actor into object and then if so we're actually going to reverse the timeline instead so you can see that that's now going to do that so if we like if we get off it will reverse the timeline so let's get our little guy on there and if we hop off it will go back down nice and simple now why did we um, set this to one well that's because we want to be able to customize all of the um, the play speed so what we're going to do is head into the components see here we've got timeline zero now you can name this to whatever you wish I'm actually going to quickly rename this platform I'm just going to move there we, are. we can drag this out we can get this and we can set play rate there you go so set play rate now the play rate is going to be how quickly this plays so we're going to create a new variable we're going to make sure that this is a float which is a number that can have decimal points we'll call this play rate we'll compile that real quick we're going to click this little eyeball symbol which is going to make this a public variable so that we can change this at any point outside of the blueprint we're going to take the play rate plug that into new play rate like so and we're actually going to default this to one there we go Ta -da. now you can see here while we have this blueprint selected 
we have play rate here and we've got this set to one if we were to make this a lower number so 0.1 it should play at 0.10 of the speed so it should take 10 seconds to get there rather than one and you can see it's taken him a jolly long time to do that same way if we decided play rate five then it's going to be five times as quick we bonk there we are Ooh, cheeky okay so let's just uh yeah that's cool now then i said i was going to quickly show you guys about functions and how a function can work basically a function is a way that we can make um less mess inside of our, our blueprint graph so you see this at some point this isn't very complex at all but you can imagine that some blueprints are going to be masses and masses of string uh, you're gonna have lots of spaghetti lots of mess and it can get quite confusing quite quickly but if you keep things inside of a function then you know where to find everything so over here on the left you can see we've got functions what we're gonna do is press add function and we're gonna say we call this set locations okay we'll compile that real quick to save that in and then from the event begin play we'll just drag off and what we can do is we can say set locations oops set locations and you see we've got our, our function here that we just set up set locations you can click this now and we'll just quickly break this link hold alt and left click to break the link so we'll say on event begin play set locations and what we'll do is we will take all of this here we'll copy that delete it we will go into the function which we can do by double clicking we'll paste it in and do this inside the function instead like so and now you can see that all that has just been shrunk down to the single node and if we open the node this is what it's hiding so let's make sure that it still works if we were to jump on this it's still going to be super fast but there you go it still works we and we should still be able to change the speed so let's put it back down to one there we are you can see that that still works as intended so there we have it guys you've got a working platform system it's a very very uh, simple system to, to set up uh, and you've got a little bit of knowledge about what a function is and how to set one up and you know how it works we could do the same thing uh, with a function down here perhaps um, but we're not we're not really going to do that uh, we don't need to for this because this is such a small amount of stuff that we really don't need to to make a function for that so there you are hopefully some of you guys are gonna find that useful um, yeah have fun with it and I'll see you guys next time